good, yeah. Um, I introduce myself. Uh, I'm born 1958 in Croatia and then migrated to Germany, had the German schooling, uh, high school and stuff, yeah. And for a while I studied medicine and uh, psychology and environmental um, yeah, science, let's say. So when I came to the Philippines, uh, I had a need yeah, to do something nice <laughs> to bring, to introduce something nice to, yeah, to all, everybody in the end, yeah, which is now possible even worldwide. Yeah. So I founded with five Filipino friends this time. Uh, this was 90. 97, 96, uh, the foundation of Paradise Project Philippines. I just called it like that because uh, people forgot about their uh, importance to stay connected to nature and it's mostly destruction, especially when it comes to farming and construction of houses and roads. Yeah? So it's a big impact of humans here, uh, especially here in the mountains. There are landslides permanent and stuff. Yeah? So it came to me, it has to be a holistic project because we have to include all what we know or uh, and different, uh, some talk about dimensions of life here, yeah. And uh, how to integrate all knowledge we have about technology, humanity and nature so that technology, nature and humanity lives in harmony. This is the idea of Paradise Project, so that technology serves our needs, like maybe wind power uh, or other technologies, yeah, and uh, that humanity can develop spiritually and uh, in peace with each other, yeah, and that nature is, uh, yeah, not not destroyed senselessly. Yeah. There's always sacrifice to do, uh, like everybody in life. But, and um, one thing, let's say when it's about regreening and the reforestation, this was my first thought. What should I do now? Yeah, I don't have so much money. Okay, okay, plant. Yeah. The father gave us a little area. Yeah, just build and plant. So we started to plant coffee, uh, pine trees, three other three stuff yeah, which grows here in the mountains of uh, La Trinidad. So, uh, then, sure, if you want to improve your surrounding, you need you need uh, financial backup too. Yeah. So, how to do this the best way, the most economic, with low impact in environment? This was the one part of the whole thing, then promoting bi biological technologies like uh, bio, bio farming or what do you call this? Uh, then how to recycle stuff and, and prevent pollution. If you, when you build or whatever you do in nature, prevent pollution. And then that there are resourceful technologies integrated and um, sure, then education and research should be done too, yeah, to observe creatures around us here and how, how they develop. Ensure arts and culture, which is a big part to integrate in our human uh, existence, yeah. to promote culture, the indigenous, the, the local cultures, and arts. This was like in the short term, the Paradise Project thing. So when we started to just plant and then we started to build, and uh, one of the ideas was uh, most of the houses here, when you, I, I, I'm in house building, okay, I have to say it like that. All my life, since I'm 14, I'm digging and mixing and, and uh, constructing yeah, with my father, with my family, now here for myself or for friends, yeah. Uh, so that and so we started and the one of the not used 
technologies here, which is not a technology, it's an thousands of year old experience to build with clay. This was like one of your questions is this uh, hemp, uh, concrete, concrete hemp stuff, or this material all in all. So clay is used in Europe. The Egyptians built clay out of clay stuff. And in desert areas in Europe, any houses, the old houses are all clay integrated in the structure. Yeah. So it's about the idea came what to bring something which everybody can use. Yeah. This was the thing. And it's for free mostly. It's just on your lot. Yeah. So how to uh, use it for your house building. Yeah. This was one of the basic stuff and the reforest so we here was nothing before now we have a forest around us just produce biomass however you just plant something we did the wrong stuff in the beginning never mind as long as something grows uh, around and the, bird, the birds come and, and uh, the animals everybody is there suddenly and the divatas okay that's short introduction Any questions? Hello. God, I love that. I just want to start depending on that. I just really loved everything you said there. Yeah, it's, the beginning is hard. I mean, for us, it was hard. We didn't have any support, anything. So, so we just did it by our own. And uh, the beginning and the ending, like in life, is very hard. Yeah. So um, I, I'm, I can only motivate if you have ideas and plans to do stuff like that yeah just uh, learn through your experiences too and there are so many infos out there it's not so difficult like 25 years ago let's say so, so we started and then sure we registered with uh, sec with, to be like legal to be able to use the name yeah, in public. So no fundings from uh, other agencies or NGOs uh, came in and it was not so developed like today, let's say, all these uh, net networks. And here we are, yeah, 25 years later. Nice. That's, how it, that's how it is, yeah. So you, I guess you're all much younger, maybe around in the 20s, maybe early 30s. So you have so much time to do things. That's the nice part. That's true. And thank you so much for sharing your knowledge to us. And it makes us uh, think about uh, yeah, personally, you know, you feel fulfilled, yeah, because you saw problems ahead already, and you implemented your best will uh, to to improve that planet. However, somehow to improve, this was the basic idea. Because I saw the sure when I was in high school in Germany, I was filled up with environmental concepts because we've been talking and discussing. This is an old story. The green party movement started in Germany somehow, yeah, in the late 70s, yeah, the Green Party and then environmental ideas. And so when I came here to the Philippines, it was uh, like a bit shocking, yeah, that even the local people lost the connection to, to nature. This was like, wow, how could we, in two, three generations, it's all gone, yeah? no more respect, no more. Yeah, taking care and only just use, use and abuse. This was like shopping for me. So, okay, what to do the opposite? One German guy came here from an NGO, from a <clears throat> German NGO, <clears throat> who are doing more other works, not really environmental stuff. He asked me, What are you doing here? And I'm saying, I did not really know. And it came to my mind the opposite of what others are doing. If they cut, we plant desperately. <laughs> so, what 
that's all. Yeah. That's that's how it was. And in the moment, I can principally tell if some somebody has a land and he don't know, just plant something there. It takes time to grow to develop, but that's all to to save some parts of this planet at least. And to have a good conscience yeah, that at least we try. It's not if you have a good plan and you don't want you don't try it, not good. You have to try it, even you fail three times, or like what happened to us that so much resistance around. And I don't want to go into details, yeah, but it was not easy. Now we enjoy and everybody who comes here is like wow. Yeah. That's that's it. That's yeah. it. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, have you seen the questions that I've sent to you on, on WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah, I saw, yeah. Okay, we can go through one more. Through it? I... Yes, yes. Take your time. There. Yeah, okay, question. How much resources were used to build project? Yeah, paradise. I mean, the uh, principally the resources depend on your plan, yeah? how big it should be, where is it located, uh, how complicated or how expensive are the materials locally. So this is all to consider, especially what do you really need when you build your own living area? You need an atelier, you're a painter, uh, you, you're a musician, you need maybe, you want to make a recording studio, but this little one or the, the real needs should be fulfilled when you build whatever you build. And then for me, all the houses here, this is uh, mostly horrible. These are concrete bunkers, uh, which you cannot breathe inside and there is no air. So we made it open space, no walls, one big space, go the toilet and the bathroom area has to separate and stuff. But the rest is just breathing, so there is air. And the other thing is, if we've been lucky, we could we could use that land. It, it's around just before it was just nobody here. Now we have many neighbors, but uh, uh, built in nature somewhere and integrate. That's the mo moment of movement that when you have the, this plan. Okay, you integrate yourself in the surrounding without lot intervention of too much digging up at the whole thing or whatever. So, and it, anyway, then you stay more low budget. That's what we did. Yeah. We, we avoided digging. Uh, I had always like two people and all in all in this nine months or half a year to finish to make it livable. It was an improvisation in the end. Just to make it livable that uh, Sarah, uh, my wife, we can leave. Took us maybe three hundred thousand peso, five thousand euro in the beginning. Then should we ask the father and stuff? And we earned, and all in all, half, half a million, let's say, like these are like ten thousand dollars, I think, in the moment. more budget it's nice so you can play more yeah. you even completely finish it that you just enter your your living area but you are still under construction that's why <laughs> that's all. And it's always something to do here yeah. when you have a house it's like your baby take care of it and if something breaks or this or that no, that's, uh, and uh, but especially here in the Philippines, it's very limited the materials you can you can get. Uh, or other countries like in Germany, we order the clay in bags, pre-mixed. We just put water, whatever mix you like, yeah, which quality, sticky, not sticky, but whatever, rough, uh, fine, fine finishing, all, and just water. And then here you have we we mixed everything ourselves. Uh, let's say this clay technology used here so whatever uh, 
they are so they, you have to, to see the region. Are you in the mountains? Are you near a city or further away? Is it exposed to wind? How is the water flow? All of this stuff. Yeah. Maybe you have to go there when there's a storm and if it's not nice outside, what's going on on your property or your lot where you want to build something and develop or to make a farm. Farm is, yeah, it's good, it's good to have a water source, a little river or even a well. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was like half a million, let's say. But now we invested much more. We improved the roof and uh, other things, tiling up stuff, uh, and still under construction. After 20, anyway, if you have a house after 15 years, you should renovate anyway, or you have to renovate or improve things. Yeah. So, yeah, the second question. Thank you so much. Yeah, the second question, I think, is estimated financial and labor cost to build one unit. You, you need somebody who is in construction, whom you can trust. Yeah. If you don't have any clue, if you're not an architect or, or engineer or stuff, yeah, or you're lost, uh, sure, the, you can learn all these things, but it's good to have somebody who, who has practice. That's, that's one important thing, who can estimate how long will it take to make that post, or how long will it take to make the foundation, how much material is really needed, how much steel maybe, or, or concrete even yeah, for the foundations of a house. And so you need really somebody who is into it, who has some experience, then it's much easier. Then, then <clears throat> I mean, I'm talking now here about the Philippines. It's very hard to find workers who will really do what you really want. That's another problem. They are used to their style. And I, I'm in construction in Europe since 14 years. So we have sometimes different methods or to, to proceed. Yeah? Or let's say just to work with the clay already was like, they look at me like, what? You should put this on the wall. That's strange. Yeah? And then they have to munch it and, and mix it. It's more, it's more work, labor intense. Yeah? But after a while, sure, everybody learns too. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we could we could make it. Let's say like that. We could make it. When you go on Paradise Project, the web page, under in the albums, you can see me like twenty five years younger and doing here the bamboo structure. For for example, this was another thing. I want you want to hear before you cannot buy straight wood. That's a problem. So how you will make a roofing? Then I said, okay, okay. Then we do it all banking. We get bamboo. Today I know I didn't have that money in this time, but today sure we, you have to treat your bamboo if you use it for your house. So the, the book book, the little buggy bugs and others don't enter. And so there are many methods. It's all in, on the web page too. Yeah. I, I showed one style how to treat bamboo with borax and boric acid, for example, if you're in the Philippines. It's a nice material. And it was the cheapest. And it's all banking anyway. So there are many things to consider if you if you really want to build your own, <clears throat> which I think most of you are aware of all this stuff. Yeah, but don't get discouraged when things go wrong. That's important. You have to find another solution or somebody who can really do it. Or you know, like it's not easy. So. Here, the prices, when per square meter, here when the contractors yeah, per square meter, such and such, I don't know the prices, but they are not, not cheap, no. especially when you do it with a contractor. It's good if your friend is an, has a building company or your friend is an architect and he does it for you for free. We actually you... have, uh, I think, architect, uh, ongoing architect yeah. here in the community, but also some engineers on the yeah, that's, community. that's great, yeah. Yes. So, 
I mean, now we, it's it's hard to cross the screen, yeah, to, That's to true. work. Yeah. That's true. The practical thing is uh, is a different dimension, and you go into the real thing out outside this screen world. Yeah. And it's, I mean, what can I say? Uh, it's a game in the end. For me, I'm now getting older and cooler and everything, I hope. <laughs> so don't take it so serious, all of this. There are so many problems can appear during your construction. And then it's raining nonstop, or you know, the workers don't come. or you know, So it takes so much time. Here, in the, here I learned to be patient. And do it in a uh, human pace, because the Western world is out of human pace. You know, it's, the speed is too speedy. The Zen moments they are missing. Nature is missing mostly when people live in cities. Yeah, uh, to uh, I'm since I studied medicine, so I'm more or less in healing. So how, what is really healing, what is it about, and how, how we can heal the surrounding around us. That this was one of the Paradise Project things, yeah. Yeah, the solar power, this is the next question. There are advantages and disadvantages of all human concepts. Yeah. And the real human technologies, which could really bring humanity further, they are not implemented uh, from inventors from 100 years ago, 50 years ago, and, and younger people now. Yeah. And it's so hard to, to uh, do your own thing somehow. I mean, if you live off, off, off grid, you want to build really remote, so you need some panels or a little wind, windmill, or if you have a river flow. To, to the uh, water turbine, little ones. There are, there are possible, there are technologies available. The process, just where to get it, how to. Uh, it's good if you have some experience with, with practical work. That's all. That, that's one with wood or with any material. So you can transfer your. Um, how to apply things or how the. How, we go with a method, uh, but which step first, second, third step, you can apply it to any other material. That's how I'm doing it. I learned to repair cars after high school, and so I was working with steel, and I had always to help my uncle to build his house, this house, and next house. You know, I, this was like, I, I hated it when I was 14, 18, 20, 25, but now I, I mean, many, 25 years ago, when I was 40, I realized, oh, that's good. I learned so much practical work. So this is uh, the solar stuff. I, I, this was funny here with our solar system, which is 5 kilowatt, with a battery backup. And uh, if we have a burnout, we can survive like three, four days. If there is no sun, nothing, we can like for this, live from the batteries. Uh, I met that solar. Uh, he has a company. He's from South Africa. Lived in Canada. Is an IT IT specialist, and he decided to to do to build solar systems in the Philippines. I was joking him. I waited twenty three years to meet him. So, <laughs> and then yeah, next week we start. I said. I didn't have it really time if I really wanted it anymore. Okay, okay, do it, just do it. If you have, all depends on your budgets too, yeah. If, if, you, if I don't have the budget, I cannot do it, finish. Even I'm environmentalist thinking or not, or yeah. so luckily it's, it's there, so okay, just do it. And then, right, they did it and it's running and uh, up here in the mountain, I mean, it's nearly, you don't have so much sun. Yeah, let's say like that. Baguio is the most rainy area here in the Philippines. So it's relative. But, but for me personally, 
to say, okay, we are the first in Benguet, in the whole Cordillera, which are officially connected to the grid and to a solar system. Yeah. So it's like a long way to go. And um, if you have the budget, sure, it's good to have some solar panels, which are not really efficient. I think only 20% or whatever comes out of those um, technical things. I don't, I didn't want to know it. I tell you honestly, I said, no, I just want that thing on my roof and finish and to see others, it's possible, especially businesses here. We are using not thousands of kilowatts, but if you have a business like you pay 50,000, 1,000, 2,000 euro or 100,000 peso uh, bill, Sure, you should have a solar system when you are in the in this tropical area to to reduce your costs. They are inefficient, I know, and the production is uh, very high tech. And, uh, but in the moment, good wind system. Yeah, that you have a wind powered little plant. I saw one guy here in Baguio. He has one running. You have lots of wind here. Okay water, biogas, and you run your cooking and heating. You don't have enough garbage or waste. And I don't want to keep animals so in unnatural conditions. So, so, so we don't have waste enough to really produce like biogas. But what we did, uh, we have an outdoor plant the water cleansing system. So our all used water from the toilet, kitchen, shower, is like digested by, by the earth, sealed so it cannot sit into the ground, yeah, and comes out. I can say no, no smell, nothing. I, I wonder, it really works. I was this was an experiment to do. I, I just had some genes how it. There are, there are uh, installations worldwide like that, yeah. so it's not nothing new. But to, how to put it in your own area? That's the that's the thing. I don't. I cannot any suggest. Yeah, what what uh, the best is? You don't need so much energy. But all everybody needs at least for a computer, for cell phone, for yeah. TV. We don't have any. I don't have a TV since forty years. Yeah. I think I didn't miss anything. So, so depends how the usage is. The, one needs a lot of lights all the time. The other, so even for the solar system, <coughs> you have to consider how much do you really need, what do you want to power and stuff like that. Hmm, what was the rest here? So many. Expensive underground wells you can learn. Mm. Sure, you, if you start, you have to check your surrounding, what I was telling before already. Analyze, is there water somewhere? Where are the, you can see it after a while when you observe, where is the really wet area? So don't build your house in the wet area. Build your house where it's a dry area of your property, for example. In the lowlands, it has to be always elevated from from the ground, uh, you cannot put your house in ground level. There are scorpions, there are centipedes, there are little snakes, you know. So, and you have to elevate it. This is like here in the Philippines, the uh, sea level, yeah. Or uh, yeah, mountainous stuff in lowlands, yeah. What can I say with this solar? I, I, I was, the idea is to, to create an independent unit from other, from all the resources. Independent means that you even produce maybe your food, but this is a, this is a science for itself, planting and to have a sustainable garden, uh, that we bring biodiversity even through farming, and not, but it's mostly done just monoculture and cut everything and then fertilize and spray, spray. So this 
it's a lot of to, lot of things to learn and it's good as that you start as soon as possible to do little stuff for you or bigger yeah, in in nature outside and improve the area that's i can just say it like that yeah. however technologies you use so much fun how much funding you have it depends all on so many things yeah But we did, we, we survived here in the mountain, then we didn't have a tire path coming to the house. We are 150 meters away from the house. We, we collected rainwater, sure, why not? Sure, you don't collect the first drops. Then when it's raining, then the roof is clean, then you get your, uh, and it's the best water we, we drink this all, all these years. With a little carbon filter through and that's it. People say, yeah, you cannot drink it, that's all. I don't know. Tap water? Holy cow, yeah. In La Union down there, or here in Bagi, or even here, our water, Trinidad water. This is full of stuff. That you cannot, you can take, not even in a shower you can take with it, because it don't clean. It's so full, the water, it don't absorb, not even the soap proper. It don't get clean, let's say, yeah. So the rainwater is perfect. It's so soft, it's wow. We really enjoy it always. There are technologies or different filters, uh, methods, how to, how to build tanks. But I did recently, I threw out the metal tanks and put some uh, really steel, uh, food grade steel, to be more cleaner, let's say. Yeah, to, to go then here, how can we tackle the fully go off grid? Number one, the consumption is important. That everybody's aware of it in the community. Don't let your lights burn so you don't leak less. In the moment, wind, water, and solar. I don't know about the new technology, this organic cells. I think we are still developing. It's not really, and I guess, very expensive. So then off grid of energy possible to install it. That's really possible. Then uh, the next step is don't produce garbage, which is nearly not to avoid yeah, because they are always packed in plastic and it's like horrible. That's an horror trip for me. Hi, sorry. Oh, so do you practice zero waste? Yeah, as good as possible. Yeah. It's as good as possible. Uh, avoid to buy stuff which is not, which is too much packed or. I, there's a technology to, to, uh, they call it um, pyrolysis to melt that plastic down and bring it back to fuel yeah, because it's made out of fuel, out of crude oil. It's like a distillation process backward. This is for me the only way to get rid of that garbage. I'm planning to get one. I will order in China. They are building it small units, bigger units, up to you can burn five, you can transform five tons a day yeah, for a big cook. I was talking oh. here, I was talking here to the department for technology. We know the doctor there. So he was. Nobody knows about it. I wonder, yeah. And here for the communities will be, or even I will buy one for for my household. It's like five hundred dollars or something. Yeah, and, and that's then, just like uh, you just put plastic in it, and it will turn it into fuel, like usable fuel, yeah, yeah. like for your car or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There are YouTube videos like from war zones, and they burn the plastic chairs to run their generators, or not burn. They they steal it back. Yeah. To, to, to run their generators to have electricity sometimes. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> and it's a and it's a ultra simple improvised installation. Like wow, yeah, like if you think this will never work, but it works. This is one one thing. Uh, then during the house building, 
people that I observe here, they're not resourceful there. So mm -hmm. the things are flying around, uh, getting messed. Uh, uh, you have to organize yourself and your area. That's important if you yeah. do whatever you do. And to be completely independent, uh, energy is one, then food. Uh, if you have somebody who was who was working uh, biodynamic farming, the uh, Steiner style, yeah, uh, or permaculture is a big word. Yeah. It's a whole little science. It's good if you have somebody in your group who can who knows about. And then when projects are running, mm -hmm. go there. You, we, you know, we have to meet in actual one day. That's all. But uh, <laughs> with, with all your knowledge and and then do a project let's say this will be a nice thing to do but now traveling is complicated it's very harsh to start something new even except you live there and you want to do it in your own area there are methods biogas is good to be independent you cook with your gas if it's a bigger community of 20 people so you have enough waste and make biogas run everything. Biogas. Yeah, because actually I was really interested in your page because um, I saw that your plan was basically to build like a community, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I think that was like such a beautiful vision because I've, I want to build something similar, but in terms of that, in terms of like an orphanage way though. And I saw that that was something that you were looking at as well and that's why yeah. i've i was like wondering what kind of um like resources i like we would need to build something like that because like as yeah. like like as an orphanage i don't know how many kids there will, there will be but like you know i want to build a space for them so where, where you? you're here in the philippines yeah, yeah, I'm here in the Philippines. Oh, okay. And I'm, yeah, and I've been looking at, like, places to build mm. something like that. And I've been talking to a lot of my friends who also share the same vision as I do. But it's just, like, we lack a lot of the expertise that you're talking about. And, like, to hear it from you, how hard it was, it's, like, really eye-opening. Like, we still have to really sit down and yeah, yeah, yeah. think about, like, a lot of other things that we have to, to think about. Uh, if you so, you need a bigger space, like two yeah. hectares, three hectares. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, all in all, let's say for activity, like four hectares at least, so that you have yeah. one that you have like one hectare for planting your own organic stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you, say you need a good planter and garden. Mm -hmm. And that you have a lot of food forest. Yeah. Fruit, fruit forest. That you have biotopes where nobody enters. So mm -hmm. animals can develop and stuff like that. And the guests or community houses and water sewer systems and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's it's complicated, but yeah. the, the number one is to find a good location for any project, let's say, for, for small sure. or big, for small or big. If you have some project which you're eyeing, I can come there one day, yeah, no problem. And then the group we meet and then check it out. And then I tell you what I think about all of this stuff. And then you do what, <laughs> you know, what you, what you want to, uh, to yeah. implement or not. That's all possible. That's all possible. I was doing this in Palawan uh, for uh, private house building. Mm -hmm. integ integrated in the forest like like three hectares big and nice nice forest around and rice rice uh, terraces and stuff yeah we did it it's, it looks very he wanted to have a very modern house yeah, so okay <laughs> nice nice it's all possible just no, definitely, yeah. yeah like it's, yeah, it's it really you just really gotta put in the work for sure. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah, to be like, there too, you know. Yeah, but, you have to really be prepared for all. Yeah, for yeah. All the things. Yeah. To give up maybe old lifestyles and. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, for and sure. And to do for a while 
other lifestyle be nature exposed. Mm-hmm. Get the tent, mm-hmm. get the tent, uh, get the mosquito net. That's it, and then you know from there you start. Yeah, that's a lot to think about. Though, though, now. Now. <laughs> choose your spots for. Choose choose your spots where you want to put little houses uh, to. Mm-hmm. to and community house, community uh, where everybody meets, yeah. where they cook together, where they eat together, mm-hmm. where they do projects together, having a metal workshop maybe, a clay workshop, and which can be the whole thing anyway, to integrate already kids. There are so many yes. homeless kids. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. yeah, nice plan. Uh, I'm anytime there to to support however I can. All right, thank you. So much from my side. So when it's when you have a location, you can go there and take a look. Yeah, sure. I'm actually still looking with a bunch of my friends. So like we're actually yeah, gonna yeah. park after this. So um see like because we've got like this whole plan, but like we just don't know how to get there because one like financials you know oh, sure, um, yeah. and then like we've we're trying to get like investors to come in like see our vision as well but you know like it doesn't really make money for them so it's not really a good investment for them either right so oh, the, inve- the investors you know you have <laughs> to invest you have to invest yourself yeah as soon as you have somebody who gives you money yeah invests or it's a donation not only I mean project like this only on yes the yes so, this, so you don't have to produce money you know to pay back or whatever or somebody is getting ten percent every month from whatever mm-hmm. you produce that, that's not nice yeah these investors I, I know people with a lot of money but it's so hard to get it from them <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly <laughs> yeah, so it's like a I'm a bit disappointed of these humans in this case yeah that that uh, I'm not talking about small mi- bil- millionaires. I'm talking about billionaires here in the moment. They're not about people yes. who are just surviving, just making their money somehow. And it's so mm-hmm. sad to see that these people, I don't know, investing in high, high, high tech. You know, but I don't know. It's crazy. Fly to the Mars, to the Moon, whatever. <laughs> these are these billions when they are implemented here in human development. Will be paradise in thirty in two generations. Will be paradise. Yeah, and the money is there. You know, that's that's my pain. I, I don't know. Maybe it's it's like Dagobert Duck. Who knows Dagobert Duck? Maybe somebody wants to spend in his own money. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm so bit, I'm really disappointed. It's maybe not a platform yet to talk about stuff like that, but but it's like what? Uh, no, it's okay. I understand. Yeah. You know, like, and, uh, and the risk, you know, nobody goes in risk. Yes, my exactly. Life, my life was only risk and adventure in the end and experiment. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder about my co uh, age mates. Uh, I'm now 63 now, yeah. but I still have good plans to go to do something totally else in one year, two years. <sighs> to, to, to change position in life, to, to give up everything, not everything. You still have your bank card or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. your car, but yeah. you really change position and live outside there somewhere. For a while at least. Yeah. People That's are stuck in, people stuck in their um, construction, mind construction and society constructions. And for me, I was born like that, that I could not cooperate really. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think not. most of us, honestly. Yeah. It's for a while it's okay. You have to know how the system works and mm-hmm. then, then the retreat has to come and do the best that you know from all your knowledge with all your friends. Exactly. To do something nice and put into certain risk. That's mm-hmm. or nothing will happen, you know? Yeah. If you don't do it and others, your friends. I know luckily now I know few projects in Talawa which are really working on that. And I know this makes me quench my soul a bit that I know that worldwide people are doing stuff in yeah. the direction what we did, what we started 20, 25 years ago. 
in this time it was clear it's needed and now it's much more clear that, that projects like you or many others worldwide are doing are really needed to improve that planet and society that's the big thing the big picture and even you just plant a tree, you do something good. You know? That's what I'm telling everybody here. It's, it's, it's 100 pesos or one seedling. Please, just plant it somewhere. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not... Yeah, that's it. This is the <laughs> no, basic. Okay. Yeah. This is yeah. the basic, basic. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so like, I mean, you got to start somewhere. And you that's... have to start somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and... yeah. It's good if you have some people who know about certain uh, styles, especially farming. I can say, uh, people say, yeah, we will do biological farming, we will do ec ecological farming. But it's so complicated. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can play around if you don't live from that produce. Yeah. No, and I was actually talking to a friend of mine about yeah, something yeah. like this, where like I love like how you're trying to build basically it, your own ecosystem yes you yes. know like how everything is um running the way they're supposed to be without you worrying too much because that's really just how things go yeah yeah that's what we tried here no yeah weather. it's like a but grows here coffee so we planted coffee yeah. mm -hmm. it gives flowers it attracts insects and bees yeah perfect Do you, can you also make coffee from them yeah sure yeah <laughs> Sometimes we drink our own, yeah. But okay. Cool. Then, uh, then there is, if, if there are trees, the birds will come. We have birds here. It's mm -hmm. like a bio, so to create a biotope, a yeah. little unit where species can save them. Themselves. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then the humans are healthy. When you're inside, you feel, yeah. It's not only the, it's, it's, the vibration is there from the forest, from fresh air, mm -hmm. nature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Any time, I can. We can start. <laughs> I have to say it like that. Any time. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it really takes time. And as long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, to prepare and then to find, to really come together and mm -hmm. send scouts out. Yeah. And stuff like that to collect them yeah. to 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 get the fundings yeah mm -hmm. very good very good <laughs> thank you yeah i i know there are worldwide people sometimes the, the world crashes on my head but then i always remember no no i'm not the only one mm -hmm. I cannot, and i cannot just give up because I exactly see, i cannot see really the results all around me or how my neighbors are cutting faster than I can plant yeah mm -hmm. no no if you have a good idea you have to push through even you have 1000 resistances running around around you definitely definitely at least you will feel good like me I feel good I we did something at least mm -hmm. and there are more plants to do anyway so yeah that's very important if you have a vision of something, this this is for all, all uh, dimensions. If you have a vision of doing stuff and the rest of the world don't understand because you're ahead of time, that's it. You have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> to do it. Yeah, so that's just, true. Uh, I can just encourage. Nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. No. Nothing. It's an experience. The whole thing, the whole procedure, yeah. from the yeah. from, same with the house building, from the foundation up until it's finished. It's an experience. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I mean, like before, I was uh, I was staying in an island yeah. where um, I learned a lot of the ways how they built their houses yeah. over like yeah. years ago. And yeah. it's just amazing how, like, it's basically just puzzle pieces. They don't use nails or anything. They just put everything in, like, puzzle form. And that's that's something, like, I want to yeah. bring into, like, part yeah, of the sustainable yeah. living. With your good plants. Right? 
So like, yeah. I guess I gotta like go back and learn more or something like that. Cause wow, the amount of knowledge you actually need to I, like you know, build. The, the the vision is I tell everybody around me is that only the tribal way of life will survive. That means a high tech tribal way it must be there. Yeah, that's my my thought for the future. And community, it's not easy to create. You know, people come with their egos, people come with their fears, whatever. But if you have a good core group, yeah, like the inner circle who maintains all of this, then then it's mm -hmm. possible. Then it's possible. Yeah. Uh, for sure. You really so, gotta have some lending hand as well with your yeah. friends. You know, I I, I work. May, uh, often alone here in the mountain, repairing or uh, trimming, planting, whatever. But it's much better and nicer if you have some companions. Yeah. Yes, that's yes, for definitely. Sure. That's for sure. It gives another... I'm used to work alone, let's say like that. Mm -hmm. So, what we have here... To, I mean, to be really off, off, off grid, it takes a while to develop mm -hmm. until you really can be off the grid. In the so moment, like now I... you've been working on this for 25 years, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how close are you to being almost off grid? Yeah, no, now I can, in summer season here in Baguio even, I can switch off uh, my Beneco thing, mm -hmm. the, the electric company, and we can survive on, on the solar. Let's say like that. That's this one. Then we have mostly all the own food. They are too high. One thousand five hundred meters above sea level. It's like okay. uh, European or yeah, uh, Mediterranean summer. Summer here, uh, nothing grows. We are too high. So. Kamote, I cannot eat all the time kamote or something. <laughs> <laughs> so you need some salad and stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So some bananas. <laughs> kamote all day, every day. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> or sayote, yeah, which is very nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got my points, guys. Yeah. <laughs> It's a process to get there. Mm -hmm. or, you, or you have all the money and bang, you let it build. And you can live there. That's, that's another style. But it's, it's nicer to have the process anyway. Mm -hmm. for, for life experience. Yeah. No, that's... We had here a zoo, you know. When you have kids, it was a zoo. Chicken and dogs and cats and... Or sacrifice too, yeah, to say, okay, we take care of all of this that's to, just to create the human environment for the new humans coming. This mm -hmm. is one of the Paradise Project ideas too. Yeah. How to mm -hmm. inspire and the, 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 uh, the, the children, the new generation stays connected to themselves and to everything around. But this was the idea too of Paradise. Yeah. Project. Yeah. Sorry, I can see Hi. Oh, go, go. Oh, I'm go, sorry. Go, Anthony. <laughs> no, I, I was saying, oh, uh, sorry, I was saying hi because we were chatting on WhatsApp. It's like, hi, Dad. <laughs> said, oh. said, said Sarah. <laughs> hi, hi there. Yes. Okay. Go on, Anthony. You were saying, you were asking. Oh, yeah. No, I've been like so curious to ask this because I, especially when I saw the type of designs that you were going with, for your, your setup uh, that you have out there in the Philippines. Uh, I'm personally based here in the United States and uh, I currently live in Las Vegas, Nevada, but I'm from New Mexico. And out there we have, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, uh, the, our Earthships community uh, done by sure, Michael yeah. Reynolds. Yeah, 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 and I just see like a lot of similarities and, and you brought the topic of inspiration. I was curious yeah. if you got inspired by the yeah. Earthship designs. He, he, he was crazy in the beginning. They took away his architect diploma yeah, because he was building uh, out of the concept and uh, 
and uh, it's a challenge. New Mexico there, wow, that's a dry, cold and hot climate at the same time can be. Uh, so it's complicated. And, but he's one of my idols too. Yeah? He's a very uh, strong character, easily to misunderstand. Yeah. Oh, definitely. But uh, Definitely one of my inspirations as well. Because uh, yeah, I yeah. got... Um, but luckily, I'll admit this. I come from a family of uh, ranchers and farmers in New Mexico. Yeah. So yeah. I have the land available to me. And this I always wanted to do as well was create like an eco community. And then that's when I actually was able to connect with Michael Reynolds at one point. I was like, oh, and I found out all this stuff is going on in town. But you're not wrong either. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. The climate out there is so back and forth and it's so seasonal. You only have like certain times you're able to grow stuff. Because I used to also have a hemp farm out there at one point, And it really was, if we're not doing it indoors or in greenhouse uh, greenhouse climate control, then it literally is okay. We have to do it uh, periodically. Yeah, I didn't hear it all, all the sentence. Sorry. Oh, uh, we're, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I was just talking about how um, I understand where you're coming from about like the difficultness of growing out here in New Mexico. I was bringing up how I used to have a hemp farm out here, but it was an outdoor hemp farm. So it was very seasonal and whatever time we got to grow before the morning. Yeah, yeah. In New Mexico, what I saw is very challenging climate to build mm -hmm. something to build something nice there. And it's more expensive to build there than here in the Philippines. At least uh, three times, four times more to you have to invest to have a you're there. That's nice. Nice. How old are you? May I ask? Oh, I'm uh, 25. Oh, you have so much time to do so many nice things. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. Actually sure doing, he's actually doing a lot right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Just, just don't give up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never. Got to always say ambition. Well, ambition. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I had an existential, I had like an a, like a quarter existential crisis by turning 25. Like, oh my God, I'm getting so old. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. As more, as more things you do, you stay, as longer you stay fit in life. That's all. People retire too early sometimes. Yeah. And then they die early. Oh, no. If you have a good just, just do it all, all of you know, what you have in your head to do. Through every climate zone, I'm in house construction, you know, like every climate zone has its challenges and you have to watch out of this and this and this. That's, that's normal. So it's a whole concept has to be developed. Whatever uh, plan to do nice projects here in future. Good observation, be there, check it out. Uh, find the holy spots, don't touch them. Yeah, the invisibles are everywhere. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, people disregard this many times. Back to your feelings. Yeah, that's all too. Yeah, you do stuff. That's important. Definitely. And no, no. I do love the fact that you put. I do love the yeah. fact that you put so much emphasis on the fact of fulfillment. To me, that is so huge. That if like my heart's not into yeah. this, it's so hard for me to fill it in. Yeah. Different here a bit too. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo, what was what else uh, I can say? Yeah. Yeah, because I definitely would like to do something out here in like where I currently live in like Las Vegas, Nevada. But like climate out here, of course, the heat is something we always battle with, uh, especially since it's averagely we're reaching during the summer months. We reach anywhere from like. 17 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. on average. So that can be difficult when it's like, okay, we're like we're collecting solar energy, stuff like that, very useful. But when it comes to like trying to keep things cool, that's when it's like, oh, okay. Because I have a lot of friends out here that are always talking about and wanting to create all these different like little eco villages out here and really working towards creating that sustainability. So it's cool to see yeah. those out. But I'm not going to deny so many challenges. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, Play technology is number one in climate zones like this. Then produce your own water. They are like condensers who are taking the moist from the air. Possible, I saw. 
and other stuff possible. There are, yeah, the, how can I say, the, the walling, like in the Zahara, it's like Zahara there, I guess, yeah. With fat walls and good ventilation, too. There are so oh, many, yeah. There are so many nice concepts. It's all it's all there out there. And there are people who know how to do it already. And they're out there. No, I mean, that's, that's probably my biggest thing is just getting started. I think yeah. it's, my thing. it's like it's like that's why I like I'm pretty sure you might have uh if you've already gone through like the questions, mine was I really wanted your opinion on using hemp cree as a building material since Oh. I have a whole background in the cannabis industry. That's why I was like, okay, yeah, really, you can... since we're already, we're already growing hemp too, I was like, I got connections for that type of stuff and in the and in agricultural. And luckily, a lot of my family out here in the United States are union workers, so plumbers, mm -hmm. electricians, uh, construction, yeah, yeah. whatever have you, uh, free uh, masonry, all that. Yeah, there. I mean, there are so many. Uh, even here, what we did. One wall we did one style. The other wall we made a style. So you can experiment with the materials in the long run anyway. If you make one a hemp creed wall, another clay wall, or yeah, you know what I mean. So so don't uh, concentrate only on one thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There are other styles to do. Let's say walling. Basic structure, I don't know, you know, you have their earthquakes, I don't know, so it's important to consider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is, that is really yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god, yeah. Then how to produce <laughs> shadow, uh, which plants can survive, you have to start to plant in this area anyway, so you have to produce uh, shadow, and plants make the best shadow. So you need water, it's, it's very, it's challenging, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's challenging. Nice, nice. Great, great. Hempcrete, I don't know. I'm a bit skeptical, but you can put in clay some cement inside. Hmm? Oh, Anthony. Hello. Sorry about that. No, I, I can hear you. Sorry, my thing cut out. Uh, say that again. My thing. Yeah, you, for example, you can put a uh, little bit cement in clay. So it's like clay cement style and fiber anyway, if you can find hemp fiber, which is the best. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard of different type of mixtures people have done. Yeah, yeah. The clay mixture is really very curious. I have it before, but I've never actually I didn't want anything personally. So that's why I got real. Like, I've, again, it's intriguing to me. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, and I do love the way it looks. Aesthetic, because again, I'm going to go. I'm also big on like aesthetics. You want that thing to at least put that behind. And it's like, ooh, that looks so Oh, I can hear you very bad, but I can just say you have to go out there and do it yourself sometimes to, to see that thing, to feel it. Yes. Yeah, I, I go to the last question. This uh, fuel cell electric vehicles and stuff, which is the best technology or what I what I know. It's it's a big problem. Yeah. The battery driven the batteries need uh, lithium and other stuff where the environment is impacted badly. I saw the rip documentary about Argentina. They dig up the water of the local farmers. You know, it's a, this is great. They need billions of liters every day water to, to get out this uh, seldom earth or rare earths. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And the Chinese, they have the biggest production. This is, this is, everything is destroyed. They are digging up everything, is, you know. So it's a questionable technology. The fuel cell, you need the hydrogen. The, the, okay, hydrogen cars. The, the hydrogen technology is, it has to be kept, I think, with 200 atmospheres. So it's very dangerous 
to to do uh, uh, gasoline stations where you can put hydrogen. It's a wow, yeah. Then what we have else? Uh, the real technology in future. I don't know who will build it. For sure not Tesla, it looks like, because he's with this battery thing so strong. Yeah. But it's but I'm a little bit disturbed with that guy. It's it's a business model for high tech business. Who will afford that? For sure not somebody who lives remote remote and lives from his own farm and tries to do something in the world. Yeah. So that's very strange for me. That's too expensive, Eric. That's too expensive. The future, really, for everybody. But, but everybody, like maybe Henry Ford, build uh, this thin Lizzie thing, this cheap $2,000, whatever thing. I, I mean, like that, and they can drive around without trying to. I, I, for sure. Nobody wants to build that. Yeah, very strange. I'm in car repair. I'm there is one German engineer uh, who was, and he is the chief engineer. He 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 made his own comp, and they mix methanol and water. You refill it like a normal gasoline. It it's not flammable, really, and it's very no. You don't need any pressure to keep anything in any tanks. And they have another style of an water and uh, methanol. It seems they heat it up, and hydrogen develops. So he runs the hydrogen, the engine. That's the technology which should be implemented. It's cheap. It's nothing, you don't need special tanks, nothing. Just, that's all. I saw this, nobody's interested. He gave, he, he donated them, uh, car guns like that uh, to the Ministry of uh, Transport and uh, Traffic in Germany. He never heard anything from them. That's very sad to hear, yeah. So now he's looking for investors to, to push his, uh, not invention, it, it, he used something and he brought it together and that's it, like, uh, this is one of the best versions. To produce pure hydrogen and then car, run cars with it, holy cow, that's, that's so much technology needed and very expensive. Yo. I see this question with this uh, Mitzel. So if there's no plants, the mushroom can, uh, the, the, it will not develop. Yeah. Here in our mountain, they did flower farming before. There was not one earthworm and we've been digging anything. I mean, just, I'm just saying how, how destroyed the land was. Yeah. So now it took like 20 years to, to recover. Now are, the earthworms are everywhere and mushrooms are growing since few years. More and more mushrooms I can find outside here in the little forest and different varieties. So I'm saying, okay, wow, well, the mushroom internet is working too, yeah. Again, somehow, <laughs> by itself, that's the best guy. Say this maybe this like one of the last if you start with nature nature will cooperate with you that's all if you it it will work against you that's it is so simple in the end and if you if you have a, a good uh, idea and good plan yeah, for everybody good plan around you nothing can happen anyway so trust in yourself guys and do your stuff you know. However, you can do it slowly, fast, complicated, easy, doesn't matter. Just just go ahead. I hope uh, I, that's, that's my message. Just 
and don't think so much about ah how it will be oh no oh no what will be there what no i'm so young no i'm old already <laughs> no no i i had an experience here uh, it's like a zen experience we, we are like uh, not steep but it's uphill our whole property from the road up to the mountain this is maybe 100 meter level difference so uh, I, i'm carrying something and then carrying you know i have a plan and and then i look there where i have to go like then i can feel it my strength goes away but when i look and watch my step in the moment and do my best suddenly i'm there where i wanted to go That's all. don't overthink stuff what will be in future nobody's any security so if you look, oh, I have to go. That it's not good. You stay there and do your best in the moment with a good plan for everybody. That's it. That's my experience too. And then all the helpers will come. Yeah. Any questions, please? Somebody there? Rainier. Hello, yes, 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 we're here. But first of all, thank you. you yeah. yeah, thank you so much for sharing so many wonderful stuff to us. It was very, so much insight and knowledge and it really helped us to reflect about a lot of things. And thank you, I I can't say anything more but thank you so much but i think uh a friend of mine mr wolf has a question uh, he asked yeah. if we have questions about life like internal peace he really want to hear your take because you seem very peaceful <laughs> I, I seem very peaceful me yeah yeah he's, his question oh. is about life like about internal peace yeah yeah the internet is like Jumpy. Yeah, it is. It is jumpy. I could not hear your sentence. Um. One moment. One moment. I. I think I can message it on WhatsApp. Um, I just I just told my surrounding they should turn off their internet stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, really. yeah. Uh, oh, I Which, think he can open his mic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, I can, you know, uh, to really reach inner peace, I, I don't know how it really goes but but meditation is good yeah any kind uh, physical movement very good it, it really brings the mind to another level too yeah. uh, it, there are researches about stuff like that but it's all hormone level in the end yeah, we're making you uneasy or easy yeah. so breathing meditation not overthinking. It's a mind hygiene. I mean, tried to exercise this many years. That how to stop thinking. That's one of the nature is healing anyway. So go out mm -hmm. in nature if you feel strange. Yeah. Mr. Wolf. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes we can. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the reason why I asked Rico about it because um, we always have these conversations about Isa Diwa and what we want to create. I wanted, uh, one of my visions for it is to have, oh, there. Is this better? Is the mic better? Yes, yes. Yeah. I think it's mm -mm. difficult. Uh, one of like the visions me and Rico had for Isa Diwa was actually creating a physical community that works on farming and focusing more on the land and just incorporate internet as a natural resource into it as well. 
because it, it's such a surprise for us how much just work or how much we've earned just through the internet. And we just wanted like to mix it all up like nature cyberpunkish, and just go through life with internet and nature at the same time. Yeah, but yeah. I, I told Reiko that the, the hard part isn't just creating that safe haven, but actually inner peace that you will talk to the community or talk to the people involved in the community to find that this is more than I, enough. Like this lifestyle is more than enough for all of us. And even like the natural nature of man who wants to have more and more and more should be diminished if we are actually trying to create that said community. Oh, so when I was, oh, I'm oh. sorry. Am I losing my headset? I'm going to ask. No, no, no. Oh, maybe it's the internet. Yes. Yeah, because I'm just very curious. Like, oh, I wanted to reach that level the way, uh, the way he explained everything and the passion that he has in, in creating his community or understanding nature. Like, I wanted to incorporate that to, like, the artists or the people in our community. Sure, you have to... Just want to be seek it, yeah. You know, the, the future is an, it must be in a high-tech environmental mm -hmm. life, <laughs> lifestyle. A high-tech environmental high lifestyle. And it's unavoidable uh, in, in the moment. Maybe one day we are all telepathic and we don't need internet and stuff. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah. But that's the way to go in the end, the long run. To, to get out all your uh, human potentials, which mm -hmm. is telepathy and intuition and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a long exercise yeah, to do your martial arts, breathing thing, yoga, mm -hmm. uh, food. Food is, I mean, we didn't talk about food. Uh, I, I don't. I eat meat one, once uh, once a year, yeah. Let's say like that. Whoa. Since since forty years, yeah. So it's important to really reduce all this garbage take in, and then yeah. you will, then you will feel better anyway. That's that's a you know that's that's an like one plus one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, such a it's such a lifestyle change to yeah. actually start going into that. Like I had most conversations about it, of how am I going to be uh, uh, creating less, uh, less waste or not going into plastic, not eating meat. There was a hard conversation because it's such a lifestyle change and a shift for yeah. myself. But it's something I want to seek because it, you're it right, like everything. nature would heal you. Nature would truly heal you. And then you change already the little details you change. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's become more, it, it, it changes all in all. Mm -hmm. You feel better. And, uh, the minds don't run too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was my problem all my years yeah, of my life. Yeah. And no fear, that's another. I can I see so many young people. I can see the fear. No, no fear. No fear. <laughs> no fear of anything. That's important. No fear of anything. And no doubts in this area. Don't doubt yourself anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really good. If you, if you, if you do a decision, uh, that's it. Leave it. Yeah. I, I think why, no, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> I think yeah. why a lot of us is so fearful, especially like in our demographic of 20s, our, yeah, or in yeah. our 20s, we feel like every movement we make is so drastic that it's going to be like the permanent thing or the permanent ship of our lives. We so focus into our studies or our career or where our like, personal life is going. And yeah, like, thinking in this grander scale of taking up this lifestyle, this movement of the love for nature and be one with nature is such a, yeah, a shift. Yeah. It's such a shift even for me. And it's that. I, I do feel the fear a lot of times 
Like, am I really gonna go into this? Am I ready to let go of any modern things and modern world? Or how can I create the perfect balance of it? So it's it's yeah. about it's about balance. How much how much influence true. all this true. technology has on you or on my mm. life or on your life? Mm. And then uh, uh, one very enlightened. When you work eight hours in front of the screen, you have to be at mm. least three, four, three four hours. Yeah. <laughs> to to regenerate. To feel yourself, to you know, it's very important. Mm -hmm. That's one of the conversations me and Rico had before, or at least with our community, that we hope one day that we could work in front of a computer, or in you front see. of our, like, in this pure nature. <laughs> you, just, you just install around. Everybody should do it like what well, we did. I did not know that I will here have here uh, online uh, built talks. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> The computer wow. is running, and I'm sitting here in our bamboo. In box. nature, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like the per the perfect balance of it. So that that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's that's why we're so amazed when Rico yeah, introduces yeah. us to you and yeah, what you were doing, because it's like one of our it's all possible. To create you just that. have to, yeah, no fear. It's all possible. No fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I'm I'm an old warrior. I have to say it like that. I discovered this uh, mm -hmm. strength, strength in me very late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, through martial arts, I learned that. So, so there is only one way forward. There is no back. Oh, I that's true. There is only one way. Mm -hmm. And this is in martial arts, in, in life. Just that both things are hindering you or, or bad deeds done to you. Uh, just go your way and that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. That's really good. That's... Yeah, yeah. So all this, don't Thank get disturbed. So yeah. don't, don't get disturbed <laughs> through all these uh, uh, ornaments around. You know, there's so many spheres now to get lost. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I, we've been lucky in the 70s. There was nothing of that. We've been doing playing soccer outside, uh, hanging out with our friends. Uh, there was no computer. There was, no... mm. <laughs> it was like motorbikes going around and having fun. Yeah, it's it's crazy. People, it's it's good to create a place where you can have both with others, perfect alone. Good too. Yeah, that's all. How to. Mm. Oh, thank yourself you. in, in yeah. nature, yeah. We hope we could Go tap that Mr. in. Wolf. Yeah, we really <laughs> hope we could tap that energy in that we could experience life like in the physical stuff, not just be so uh, connected to the internet all the time. But yeah, yeah then, like one day, I really hope so. That me and Rachel could manifest that kind of community and teach the stuff that you're teaching to them as well. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah, important not to give up with a good idea and uh, one day just materialize. It will be there, just work on mm -hmm. it. Thank it's you. Here. For me, uh, what I wanted to say to the community, whatever projects uh, anybody is doing, we can connect and uh, I can Come there maybe one day or you know, help personally there. Have a good time with you guys <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I'm open. <clears throat> I'm open to to this. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Sarah have been even even before when I con uh, I connected to her through her animal communication course. That's that's yeah, yeah. and and. And she's been inviting that maybe someday when, when things and traveling is not a bit hard, maybe you can visit there in, in Benguet or there in Palawan. And it's like, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And that would be much more nicer than just like virtually yeah. on screen. Great. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm open to any visit. Yeah. <laughs> we, will just, uh, we can arrange instantly and uh, to support any of your 
good plans. And one day we just do, we think about maybe we can do something together in future. Yeah, that's all possible. All possible. Thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know that there are more people doing stuff. That's clear. That's that's what keeps me up. That I'm not alone. I see your generation. Many are interested in stuff like that. And many, a few of our friends really, they, they, they really did it too. They got land and live with their family now somewhere in Balear or Palawan. And uh, one, one thought of me is to, to create many units like this and then to have the opportunity to live there maybe a half year in this <laughs> community and then maybe in Arizona one day or Palawan wherever on the world to have an exchange of impression. Yeah, lovely. Thank you so much, so much to the opportunity to talk to you all and, and uh, yeah, just go forward. Just do your thing. That's important. Thanks. And take your nature time out. Important, guys. Yes. Thank it's you for the reminder. Yeah. It's undervalued. It's disregarded. But we come from there. We come from there without nothing. We enter without nothing here. Now we have all this stuff to disturb us. <laughs> all right, my dears. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely lunch time as well. It's yes. been a wonderful time. And hopefully, see you once again, maybe something soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you yeah, so if, much. If there are questions, you can text me stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, so, I'll just really so, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. All right. I I'm happy that I could give the whole impression. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to keep up the spirits. Yeah, that's important. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys too. Yeah.